and welcome back to On the Flip Side. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing Nine Inch Nails' Bad Witch. That uh, came out in 2018. Definitely, I'd say, a really nice return to form. In 2016, Nine Inch Nails came out with an EP. It would be one of three that were called Not the Actual Events. In 2017, they released uh, Ad Violence, the second EP in the series. And the third one they released, technically, it's EP length but uh, it is marketed as an entire album called Bad Witch. I'd say this is some of their better material that come out over the past decade, especially when you consider albums like Hesitation Marks, which are, you know, it's Nine Inch Nails, but it's definitely Nine Inch Nails at a weaker point. Uh, I'd say overall, this album is definitely worth a listen, but uh, let's get into it. We're gonna start with side A, obviously, just like normal, and we'll go from there. So we'll see you on the flip side. All right, so we're coming back to Nine Inch Nails' Bad Witch on side one. Uh, we got the first track on the record. It's called Shit Mirror. Uh, great start to the record so far. Trent Reznor over the past few years, and especially on this EP, has kind of utilized this sort of watery lo-fi effect. For this track here, makes a lot of sense. I think it's kind of, you know, you want it to be this kind of underlaying thing that, you know, it, you, want it, you want a consistent theme to the whole album, and it's used a lot a lot on this record, you know, to, to a good extent here, or to good execution here. <clears throat> so Shit Mirror is a high point so far. Of course, first track on the record, you want to have a good opener, so it makes sense here. I'd say this track is definitely, you know, it's more reminiscent of the earlier Nine Inch Nails material. I'd say it's not quite broken EP level of aggression, but it's definitely sort of reaching into that vein and kind of pulling out some of those elements and mixing up with, uh, with the, some of like the mid 2000s stuff, sort of like a, like a with teeth, but like with more teeth. So the second track on here we got is Ahead of Ourselves, a uh, really high tempo with these drums that kind of like do these rolls that sort of devolve in tempo as they go on. Um, a really interesting use of percussion on this track overall. And again, you have more of that like wispy, watery vocal effect on Trent Reznor's voice, which kind of makes him sound like fragile in kind of a way, or like um, like almost like this vocal track is like barely there, you know? It's a good track. It's just overall, I think you have a bit of tempo, like flux here that I think works in favor of the track, but I kind of would have liked to have seen them stick with something a little more straightforward. But I mean, for the context of the album, it makes sense, but it's it comes across as a little bit odd just in the context of the rest of their stuff. But overall, I, I'd say it helps the track probably more than it harms it in the context of the rest of the record. The third track here we've got is Play the Goddamn Part, which is this really nice bassy sort of track with a lot of neat percussion noises and sampling. And then you have these really like sort of distant saxophones and a horn section here that's really doing a lot. I think it's adding a lot to this track just to like the, the layers and layers that Trent Reznor has built on this album. And of course, obviously Atticus Ross as well. He's the first new official band member of Nine Inch Nails, I think, ever. Other than that, it was just Trent Reznor with a touring band. So Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross on this one, really, really excellent use of, uh, I think, the knowledge that they had gained from doing soundtracks from, you know, the past decade and a half prior of just really interesting soundscape building and it really shows on Play the Goddamn Part. And I think it's it's probably so far the highest point on this record in my mind. Other than that, that's side one of the record. We'll come back here in just a minute, talk about side two, and uh, we'll see you on the flip side. So, back with side two of Nine Inch Nails' Bad Witch. Uh, it seems like uh, the next track on this, God Break Down the Door, is almost a continuation of Play the Goddamn Part, or at least thematically it's sort of a continuation. Um, more of like these like high tempo into like relaxing, almost maybe uneasy saxophone delivery. Really well done on this track as well. I'd say God Break Down the Door might be the strongest track on the record. After this we have I'm Not From This World, which is another one of these. Um, on Ad Violence they had a track, I believe towards the end of the record, I think like the background world. That one wasn't, um, I, I think they're trying to do that again here, 
except to slightly more interesting effect because that track you know was like I think 12 minutes long and it really didn't go anywhere but I'm not from this world that I think works really well uh, in the context of this album specifically the last track on the record we have is over and out which has these really nice you know like laid-back bass tracks and these sort of staccato um, like piano synthesizer notes and it's Probably one of the more pleasant Nine Inch Nails like soundscapes you could find out there. Although Trent Reznor's obviously done a lot, it's not like you know anything off of the Fragile, but it's definitely for more modern Nine Inch Nails. This is quite a bit more focused and oriented towards that. Overall thoughts on the record, I think. For 2018, uh, especially when, when they released this album, they went on the Cold and Black and Infinite tour as support for this, and it was all in-person ticket sales, and I think it was Nine Inch Nails and Trent Reznor really trying to like rehash a lot of the old themes and ideas from earlier Nine Inch Nails material, and I think with this record you have a really perfect blend and perfect monster of early Nine Inch Nails sort of um, headspace and you have an excellent offering of modern Nine Inch Nails uh, sensibilities with writing and nuance and subtlety. And overall, I think this is just a, a, your best blend of those two styles that you're gonna find in their entire discography. And I, and I think they know that because when they went on that tour, I believe every night of those shows, I went to the two Red Rock shows, and those sets were entirely different except for like the encore, which was hurt as always and uh, uh, head like a hole. And other than that, those set lists were entirely different, whereas, you know, to earlier Nine Inch Nails shows, you'd, like most bands, you play the same set every single night of the tour with very minor differences. But I think Trent Reznor is really trying to reach back and pull back some of that fire here and just sort of light a fire under his ass to put out some really compelling stuff. And I think this might be a little tame, in comparison to what they could be doing. However, I do think it's a good sign of things to come. Um, you know, it's 2020 now and we should be anticipating some kind of Nine Inch Nails release at some point soon. They did put out uh, Ghosts 5 and 6, which was a surprise album drop, I believe just back in like May or something. And those were pretty good ambient records or, you know, it seemed like some of them could have been scraps from this record as well or maybe just leftover stuff they weren't sure what to use or what to do with or how to fit lyrics to sort of like a you know like a fashion week death rip kind of situation overall uh this record i'd say it's absolutely worth your time i think it's only maxes out at around like 20 or 25 minutes it's only six songs so if you got you know a half hour listen to this thing give it a quick little spin and you know analyze it great record overall and uh i i think it's definitely not one you should pass up thank you all so much for watching and thanks for sticking around and thanks for the supporting the channel um if you like this video leave a comment subscribe it helps the channel out a lot to get engagement with youtube's platform and share this with your friends if you like it you know or if you think they'll like it i'm, I'm absolutely you know a fan of branching out and getting a new audience or getting new audience members who can you know leave some more comments and you know Tell me, what, what, what do you think of this record, you know? I want to have a conversation with y'all. Thank you so much again, and we'll see you on the flip side, and see you next week.